Hey, thanks for watching Revelations. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, the executive producer and your show host. This is a series on evangelism and discipleship. We're highlighting ministries all around the country that are serious about just that, hoping that you, our viewer, would get a couple of revelations. God is still working and is a part for you to be playing in the body of Christ. Well, we're back in North Dakota, Minot, North Dakota, visiting the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. And with me is Gene Caseman, the president of the organization. Gene, thanks again for having us back and giving us the update on what God's been doing here lately. Well, we're very really appreciative that you you know, can visit us again, and we'll give you an update. Uh, we were started in 1952 as a mission of the Lutheran Church, and uh, we fulfilled that mission consistently for 60 years. Uh, during those 60 years, we have never closed our doors. We have had helping children and families 20, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 60 years straight. Wow, and you have a few locations now. Tell me about that. Uh, our main campus is in Minot, North Dakota. Um, we have a school on this campus, nationally accredited K through 12. And we help outpatient clinics, but most important, we provide a home for boys and girls on this campus. And we are licensed to provide uh, care for 60 boys and girls. And then we have another facility in Bismarck mm -hmm. on a smaller eight acre campus. Again, we have our school system there in addition to providing a home for 16 boys and girls. And then we're in the process in Fargo, North Dakota, we have several programs located in the city and we're consolidating them on a 30-acre campus. Probably have seen a lot of uh, transformation over the years, so. Definitely a Christian organization. And in that realm, we work with children in the home and also in, in a, a residential setting, providing a home for children. So any given day, we are licensed to provide care for 126 boys and girls, provide them a home uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. There's a feeling if you got them out of town or got them several states away in a rural environment, mm -hmm. that it would be a healthy setting for them. Working with the younger age group, uh, 14 through 16, sometimes less than 14. Mm -hmm. I know we've had some boys in emergency placement as young as five. And um, we're also working more with, um, it's a comp more complex child. There's a lot more of the uh, uh, abuse issues that are there emotional issues. And you're also ministering to the whole family as well, as right. when possible. Mm -hmm. Now our, our, our vision uh, is, you know, to have, to see all children and families uh, succeed and, and have achieved greater success in life. That's our vision. And that vision is tied to our mission statement, which is to help children and families succeed in the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. So one is tied to the other. Yeah. And what we are about is children and families. Yeah, well this is awesome. Hey, stay tuned. We've got a lot to talk about to see how God is using Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch to, to demonstrate this good news in word and deed. Stay tuned. The Heartbeat is our mission that we help at-risk children and their families succeed in the name of Christ. Everything we do here is about that mission. I always say it comes down to a Christ-centered environment where children and families can feel like they finally have the support they need. So we are helping the children to make a difference in their lives through the use of Christ and the church. Give time nobody else would ever consider and share love like nobody else ever would, or has. And so that's the heartbeat of this place, is the loving nature of the people who work with the children. Well, each child that comes in, um, we do what's called a multidisciplinary assessment. We look specifically at the medical, to their psychiatric, psychological, and what we focus on in all of that is identifying strengths. Some kids are just really struggling and need help, and it's just, it's next door kids. So it's, it's really hard to, for them to not understand that these are kids, we're just preparing them for their future, and, and they deserve as much as everyone else does to be in the communities. And we, we also look very broad, and is there help the family needs, and in the meantime, is there assistance they need? And, you know, we try to work 
with not only the resident, their youth, but their family as well. And, you know, help, help the whole family unit, you know, as a whole. The face of the children coming in are a lot different than they used to be. They used to have extended families and grandpas and grandmas and so many of them, but now the families usually are a lot of a single parent or no parent or they come in for work and then leave the child behind when they, when they go, so that, that's changed a lot. We have special education teachers on site at all times. We have paraprofessionals and we have specialists in each of the education categories working with the kids at all times. To develop uh, and, and help children and families in a Christ-centered environment so that we can uh, educate them as, as best to our abilities and to uh, try and give them a viable future in this global environment that we live in. We also have spiritual life programs and that's a, that is walking them through the basics of, of Christian life, the basics of, of the biblical narrative, God's saving love for us. They have a lot of different groups, uh, whether it's for occupational therapy, uh, tr more traditional therapy, or we even have a horse therapy program. Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch has a strength, I think, in three areas. One of those is the staff, the staff that are chosen to work here. Are the, they're the ones that meet with the children. They're the ones whose Christian witness is passed on to the kids. They're the ones that really make a difference. A wonderful opportunity to have an adolescent uh, in a different environment uh, with a team of professionals. And we're really changing the context of their life. So we really get a, a super opportunity to help them. Well, thanks for continuing to watch Revelations. Again, we're in Minot, North Dakota, visiting Gene Caseman, the president for the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. And Gene, you know, when we talk about evangelism, what we're learning is that it, it all, it's all about relationships, mm -hmm. right? So tell us a little bit about your approach and how you guys are demonstrating Christ and leading people to Christ. I, th I think number one is not think. I know it's by example. And what we want to do is our spiritual life program is not in the chapel. Our spiritual life program is the daily lives of the boys and girls. Uh, you know, we say prayers at meals, we have devotions, we do have chapel services, but what we try to do is set that ex Christian example of, of caring and love for the boys and girls in our care, mm -hmm. in their living areas, as how we help them, how we relate to them, how we work with their families. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna, you know, we are a faith-based or Christian organization, but it has to permeate the whole agency. Yeah. Well, what I love most about the organization is that each child's unique and you have a staff that really helps assess. And while mm -hmm. you're doing programs like, uh, whether it's school to riding dirt bikes or getting on horses, they're building relationships with each student and, and being able to, you know, talk about Jesus right. along the way. I think, you know, our spiritual life program, I think, you know, there's a lot of agencies that are look like Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. You know, what what's makes us different, we are, are truly Christian, and we do put a huge amount of resources into our spiritual life program. And the best example is that when a boy or girl comes into our program, we do a spiritual life assessment. Because, you know, morality, being able to tell what is right or wrong in a Christian sense is so important to treatment. Yeah. And it's, you know, and we don't foist that upon them. We just say, okay, where are you at spiritually? Because a lot of times where they're at spiritually, and then that moral part is where they are on, on the treatment end and the issues they have. Right. And the ability probably to forgive a lot of people that have you know, not done them well in their life. That's the gospel, that's the good news, right? We've been adopted in by grace and being forgiven by our God through Jesus Christ and you're laying down the foundation for these kids to live a successful life in the name of Christ. That's yes. the good news. And succeed in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Stay tuned. We're going to get some more testimonies and interviews talking about how relational evangelism is really the way to demonstrate this gospel. Stay tuned.
There are a, a wide variety of programs at the ranch and uh, first of all you have the, the residential side which then encompasses uh, uh, DJS and, and also the, the services that they get through the medical areas. And programming is an important piece because the different kinds of programs, the activities, the counseling, the medical help that kids get, the spiritual direction that they find through the Christian programming that goes on, programming is really important. We have multiple um, different programming that are therapeutic. So we have the horse program. Um, that program is a part of both our recreation but also therapy, um, both individual and group. So we learn about boundaries, coping mechanisms. You know, the horse is a very sensitive animal and um, it's great to watch the team work with the child. Uh, find new ways of coping uh, and just interacting with others, setting goals. You know, I've seen families come out and work with the youth, you know, combing a horse, saddling a horse. Sometimes they get trained with the resident, the youth, they get to ride with them. Um, the mini bike program, we also have um, the greenhouse program and tech ed program for the kids to do. They go to regular classes in the classroom. We have a lot of recreation that's done. We have the greenhouse project here. We completed that, We're building the greenhouse this summer. Um, and then they also do a lot of gardening outside in the yard and then work on the grounds with the staff too. Coming to the table with multidisciplinary teams such as a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a therapist, education, and of course the client and the family in the center of it all. You know, you can't have that hope and healing without having faith that it exists. And it has to go beyond yourself. It has to be part of a larger thing. People will sponsor uh, one of our residents. They'll write little encouraging notes. We tell them you can't expect to get anything back, but just them knowing that somebody out there cares for them is giving them words of encouragement from time to time. Maybe they give them a little gift at Christmas, you know, just a cute little thing, a little card telling them they're thinking about them, they're praying for them. That provides an awful lot of hope and an awful lot of encouragement for our residents. We are here for the kids and to help them go on their next journey and to be the best that they can be and to give them the tools that they need to be successful in life. I do what I do here at the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch because I enjoy working with children and I feel like we are making a difference in the lives of these children. Our goal is to help kids that are in crisis and their families succeed in the name of Christ, to come in and just show them what it really truly is like to be a good Christian, um, to follow those rules and those guidelines that God and Jesus taught us. A group of businessmen called the Bremer Outdoors team, every year they organize a fishing trip for us and several business people give up their weekend and they, we go up to a lake in the Turtle Mountains, a beautiful setting, and every student I bring has a businessman as a mentor for the day and they show them, here's what good living gets you. Well, thanks again for continuing to watch Revelations. It's a series on evangelism and discipleship, and that's what we're talking about next is discipleship. We're visiting the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. We've got Gene Caseman, the president of the organization with us. You know, discipleship, I always say, is, is, a, is a big church word, and uh, you're building up followers mm -hmm. of, of God and Christ, and you know, and you guys have, again, a, a relational approach to, uh, to doing discipleship. Talk to me about your philosophies and... I, th I think number one, not think, what we, you know, what we try to do is you have to lead by example. Mm -hmm. And if you truly can't emulate or have you know, how we deal with people and children and your larger you know, humanity in a, in a Christian manner and have that be a mirror to the boys and girls you're working with, it's hard to do that, in that mm -hmm. to establish that relationship unless you do it in that manner. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is show the, you know, set an example for our boys and girls on a daily basis and that, like I've mentioned before in, from previous conversations not necessarily have the spiritual life program just in the chapel but throughout the whole agency 
and establish that discipleship in that manner. Right. Well, you know, you guys can do all kinds of projects. You have school during the day, and then you have all kinds of programs, and you know, there's a lot of interaction going on, and a lot of uh, opportunity to do application of some of these biblical principles. Right. Right. Uh, one example in our school, we're, we're a nationally accredited school, so our credits, our credits will go to any college or university or another high school. And what we do is, we, you know, in an English class, we study the great books. Well, one of the great books we study is the Bible, right. because it is one of the great books. Right. So I think, you know, we use those things to make, you know, the religion or the everyday part of one's life. Yeah, it's all about building a foundation mm -hmm. for them to springboard from here and, and uh, take and the have, teachings with them. Yeah, so we help. We bring a lot of servant teams in from uh, churches throughout the country. And again, it's a wonderful way for our staff and residents, residents and staff, to interact with these people that come in truly with this attitude that they want to help us in a Christian manner. Yeah, and living out their Christian faith. Mm -hmm. you know. So it's a wonderful example. Well, it is a good example. Stay tuned and we're going to talk a little bit more about discipleship and how Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch is really building a solid foundation for these, these kids to, to live a successful life in the name of Christ. Well, because we are a Christian mission, when a child is uh, sent to the ranch to be a resident, becomes a resident, they and their family know that before they come here, that we are a Christian mission. That is what draws some of the families to have their children here. Well, we are a Lutheran program. Uh, we are welcoming the children from all different aspects, uh, Christian and non-Christian. You know, it's really just seeing sometimes that those kids are open to that and being willing to understand and to see the difference that the Lord can make in their life. But here at Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch, we're able to sit down and say, here's Christ. He's here to support you through this. Let's start with feeling love before we start talking about prescription. And then all in there is the spiritual life um, groups with Pastor Jones and a number of different things like that. I'm involved quite a bit with the, uh, the teaching of the spiritual life programming for the residents. That's classes that that through walking through biblical uh, studies we, we look at how best to serve them with uh, issues of anger, issues of guilt, issues of, of neglect, them being the victims of abuse, of, of being victims of violence, being exposed to violence and, and these sorts of things. Uh, helping them get over those feelings, helping them through steps of forgiveness and reconciliation uh, between uh, their families and with each other. We have a class called Bible as Literature. You know, I fell in love with Jesus and I fell in love with the notion that the Bible is the best teacher there is. Emphasizing the acceptance of the person and uh, whatever uh, types of mistakes they've made in the past, uh, you know, we really, we, we look at those but we help them, uh, kind of put them in perspective, uh, accept them and uh, move on. But part of that is to help identify and to um, bring to the school the teachers and the therapists, the whole team works on how do we best help this child. The educational part is also a very, very important part of that whole well-being because as you know, the children need to have an education as well as, as the, the development as a well-rounded being. I think a good foundation in education is important because a lot of our kids have not felt successful in school and I feel like our school gives them an opportunity to be successful with our small classrooms and our one-on-one -on -one teaching. They can build relationships with teachers and see that school is an okay place to be and it actually is a great place to be. And maybe even more than education or academic gain, we give them the confidence to to achieve something they've never had before. Some of the programs that we have in the school here uh, 
don't encompass just the basics. We, we have photography classes in addition to English, math, science, all of those things. We have vocational classes in, in shop, um, welding and, and carpentry, and, and then we also have the electronic aspect of all of that, which has become very, very popular in the past few years. You see at the end of the day that you've made some progress, you, you help somebody that needs it. You have to be very patient, very loving, very caring, and I think all of our staff represent that very well. This their love they give the kids through God, and it gets them back on the road, that there is strength and power, and if they hang in there, they can do it, and they do. Hey, thanks for continuing to watch Revelations. By now, we're hoping you've had a few. God is still working, and He's working through people just like you. And here at the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch, there's certainly a way for you to get involved and get plugged in. Gene Caseman is the president. Tell me a little bit about how the body of Christ can, can co-labor with you guys and make a real impact in, in the lives of some of these children and their families. I think, you know, the most important thing is prayers. You know, prayers for age, our boys and girls in our care, our staff agency itself. I mean that's, that is really uplifting and I think that is what's made Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch successful. Um, people also get involved in volunteering, providing you know the skill sets they have to help our boys and girls or agency, uh, both in our programs and our thrift stores. People get involved by donating um, items they don't need anymore to our thrift stores and again that enables us to sell those it provides financial support for our programs and it's also a second ministry where we can make available household goods, clothing, appliances to families that may not be able to afford retail stores. Yeah, I heard some good testimonies about that. Uh, we also, obviously, financial support you know, is an important area. Uh, people like to give to the program. Sometimes they like to give to specific areas, like we have an endowment fund for our spiritual life. People say, well, I want to put the ranch in my will, or I want to give this gift, but I want to go to spiritual life. We have endowment funds for education. And recently, 2011, you guys had uh, some floods that affected all three campuses. Yes. You're still rebuilding from that, so. And that would be another part. We, we received some, a, a tremendous outpouring of prayers and, and financial support throughout the country. And those floods impacted the ranch to the extent I'm, it's going to take another two years for us to uh, fully recover in the area of, of staff recruitment and retention. What we have is a real shortage of staff housing. We're trying to alleviate that issue, yeah. even though we've gotten our programs up to where they should be functioning. Yeah. Listen, stay tuned. There's lots of opportunities for the Body of Christ to co-labor with the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch to make a real impact for these children and their families. I would encourage people to come and check out what God is doing here. Every day you will see God's hand in what the kids are doing. Sometimes the children come back one, two, three years later and they're able to say, you made a difference. You, you helped me through a really tough time. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but now I understand why you guys did what you did. Of course, the, the work with the thrift stores that people donate is just fabulous because that goes right to our programs. We also are able to have some of the kids that are in our care that are able to do summer work for us and get that training and get those job skills so that when they graduate from the program, they're able to be successful and have some job experience. So it's using our talents. It's being good stewards of our resources, time, energy, money. There's some kids that have pen pals through churches and um, you know so there's lots of different ways to get involved all they have to do is call and ask how can I get involved with the branch look at the website or give us a call and there's tons of programs out here and employment at Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch is truly a rewarding experience when I go home at the end of the night I get to be excited about the things I did at work it doesn't feel like just a different job or a job at all because we are a Christian mission we can pray with each other openly and not 
not even hold back in that. We can, we can do that. It's a beautiful gift from God. All I can say is just come out here to the ranch or visit any of the campuses. The ranch is doing just a wonderful job on, on, with their staff and, and, and with the help of God. You know, these kids are succeeding in life and going on and, and, and having a family. Well, I'd like to thank our viewers again for watching this episode of Revelations. And Gene, thanks again for letting our team highlight what God's been doing at Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch. What an amazing staff you guys have. Now, we have a, a wonderful staff, and uh, it's, it's amazing when I look at them. We have 500 staff, a little bit over 500, on 18 different locations in North Dakota, all of them focused on the same mission to help children and families succeed in the name of Christ. And if it wouldn't be for that staff, that spirit-filled staff, the agency wouldn't be what it is because the agency basically is a human organism. It's yeah. composed of humans helping out children and families. Yeah, well, I always say God's in the people business and He uses people to do His work, right? Right. Well, listen, let's pray together with our viewers watching and hopefully the God through the Holy Spirit can move in the hearts of uh, the body of Christ to, to get more involved with you guys. Okay. Let's do that. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, again, with all our viewers watching, we pray in one accord and say, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for uh, giving us wisdom and insight, giving us all gifts and talents and abilities and resources that we can offer back to you and say, Lord, show us how we can use it for your glory. We lift up every uh, child and every family that is in crisis. We thank you for ministries like the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch that is on the front lines, uh, helping heal those hurts and helping transform lives and introduce them to the living Savior, Jesus Christ. So Father, we pray right now uh, that you would show us our next steps on how we can co-labor together and get more involved in advancing your kingdom and being a real helps ministry. So uh, we thank you for the board of directors, all the staff and all the volunteers and every child that's been here and that will be coming here to one of the locations in, in North Dakota. So again, we pray for your blessing on this ministry and we ask you to do this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks again for watching. Until our next episode, I want to encourage you one more time to take a look at the website. It's dakotaranch.org. And uh, until our next episode, may you and your family be blessed.